Hi everyone, how are you all doing? It's been such a long time since we've seen your smiley faces. We're really missing you all at the Hub. So we thought it might be nice just to check in with you for a few minutes each week, um, just to share some fun activities that maybe you can try at home with your families and to see whether or not you've got some things that you would like to share with us. Maybe you could get a grown up to help you take some pictures of some of the things that you've been doing or even a little video clip of some fun things that you've been up to to keep you busy in these crazy lockdown times. We're going to have a little look today at some of the ways that this crazy time is making us feel, some of our emotions, some of the things that make us feel a little bit different. So join in, have some fun with us and stay safe. Hello, our story today is about Joshua and how he led God's people into the promised land but it starts before then it starts with God's people being stuck they're stuck in the wilderness and they've been there for 40 years a really long time and they've got no real houses to live in they don't have a real lifestyle to follow they are wandering across the wilderness they've been there ever since their parents came and looked over the river Jordan. They looked into the promised land, but they forgot that they could trust God. They forgot God's promise to lead them into the promised land. And they were scared by what they might face when they went into the promised land. So they turned away. And ever since then, they have been wandering across the wilderness. I wonder how the people felt. I know for me, I might feel frustrated, even angry. Definitely, I would be feeling sad. But God knew how his people were feeling and he wanted to help them. And so he said, now's the time. Now is the time for you to go in to the promised land. And he told jo Joshua to gather the people together. So Joshua did, and he led his people through Jordan and into the promised land. How must they have been feeling now? Were they excited? Were they nervous? Were they just full of energy? How were they feeling? But as they came into the promised land, they hit a problem. They came to the city of Jericho. Jericho was a big city with big strong walls and a very strong army and there they were facing it knowing they couldn't go any further while the city was there. How were they feeling now? Were they feeling disappointed? Were they feeling frightened? Did they feel like giving up? But God knew exactly how they were feeling. And he wanted to help them. And so he told Joshua the plan. Now, you may know this story, but let's go through it together again. The plan was really simple, but it was a little bit strange for a battle. You see, God told them that they were to walk around the walls of Jericho every day. First of all, the army were to march out. but They were to be silent. Around they went, around the walls, and behind them came the priests. And the priests had their horns, and the priests were to blow <coughs> their horns as they walked. And that's what they did on day one. And off they went again on day two. The soldiers marching silently, the priests blowing their horns. <coughs> and around they went. And they did the same on day three, on day four, on day five, and on day six. But day seven was to be a little bit different. It started out the same. Around they went with the soldiers marching silently, with the priests blowing their trumpets. And around they went, around they went one time. Two times, three times, four times, five times, and six times. But on the seventh time, it was different. Around they went, the soldiers marching at the front, the priests 
blowing on their horns. But as soon as the people heard the priests blow on their horns, they gave the greatest, the biggest victory shout, yes! And down came the walls of Jericho. The people were victorious. So how were they feeling now? Did they feel like celebrating? Were they excited about the new life they were about to begin? The fact that they weren't wandering and stuck in the wilderness anymore? But one thing they did know, they knew that God understood how they felt. They knew that God cared about how they felt and they knew that God wanted to help them. Welcome children. Today we are going to be talking about sadness. In this story we saw that when Joshua and the people moved into the promised land they had many different emotions. God knew exactly how his people felt and he cared and wanted to help. Sometimes things made them feel sad and today we are thinking about how God wanted to help them when they felt sad and how he wants to help us when we feel sad today. Let me show you what I mean. For this I will need a glass of water mixed with coffee, a jug of clean water, and an empty bowl. If I start with a glass of coffee which looks muddy, and then I pour some clean water into the glass, what will happen? When I added the water, the water looked just as muddy as it did before. So to make a difference to the water, I tried pouring out some of the water into the bowl before adding some of the clean water. Because of the muddy water, there was some muddy water still left in the glass, the water still wasn't completely clean. So I think there's only one thing for it. I need to pour all the water into the bowl and then put the clean water into the glass. And what do we get? Success, clean water. Do you know this experiment can help us to learn about how God can help us when we feel sad? When we are feeling really sad, we can feel we can feel the following emotions. We can feel really sad when um, we fall out with friends. We can feel really sad when the when we're in the playground and nobody wants to play with us, and we feel really alone. And we can feel really, really sad when somebody that we love dies. So, do you think God can make us feel better? How do you think he can make us feel better? God wants to help us when we feel sad. He wants to help us to feel better. In the Bible, we are told that to pour all our troubles to God. What that means is that we should be honest with God and tell him what we are really feeling. As we pour out our troubles, God can deal with them and give us healing. Just, as, just like I poured the muddy water out of the glass. So, to, so the, it is really, really, really important to be honest with God and tell him how we feel. Pour it all out, just like I did when I emptied the glass. When we give God all our sadness, he can make us feel better. When I only poured some of the muddy water away, adding the fresh, the fresh clean water it didn't make much of a big difference but when I poured out all the water into my bowl and replaced it with clean water what a difference you could see clean water so when you're feeling really sad you need to tell God all about it and then you can leave the sadness with God and ask him to help you to feel better maybe you could try this activity at home to remind you that it is right for us to tell God when we feel sad it is right for us to be totally honest with him about how we feel and that God cares how we feel and he wants to help us. Thank you.
Hi kids, how are you all doing in this lockdown? It's ages since we've seen you and we leaders miss you a lot. We really can't wait to see you all again once we're back together. I expect most of you will be twice as tall as you were when we last saw you. How are you feeling? Are you sad or are you happy? Maybe sad that you can't see your friends or visit your family. Maybe happy because the weather's been mostly pretty good. Anyway, today we're going to be looking at a craft which, well don't go away because yours is going to be a lot better than this one. Very simple. If all you have is a paper plate and felt tip pens, then that is all you need. But you can use whatever you like to decorate your plate. So I'm going to use some bits and pieces which I've found around the house. I have googly eyes, which is the, the most ideal thing if you have got them. I'm going to glue them in place. One, two. That's the eyes in place. I've got some funny shaped pipe cleaners for the uh, eyebrows, which I'm going to staple in place. Be careful using a stapler. If you need to ask a grown up for help, then do so. Because we don't want your fingers getting staples in them. That's the eyebrows done. For the mouth, I've just got a bit of red card or red paper and I drew a mouth shape on it. Here is one I did earlier on. I'm using a split pin, a butterfly clip, a paper fastener to put this on the plate. Again, you need to ask a grown up for help because it's quite difficult making the hole. But there we go, that's my mouth in place. So the face is starting to take shape. For the ears, I thought I'd go a bit uh, blingy and have gold ears, which I'm going to glue in place. There we go. Lots of the ears in place. For a bit of added effect, I thought I would put some little jewels on the ears. By the way, if you don't have googly eyes, you can just draw your own eyes by doing a black circle and then fill in the corner like that with a black pen. For the hair, I'm going to do something a little bit more interesting. I'm going to actually use feathers, but you can use wool, you could use pipe cleaners, or you could just draw the hair with felt tip pens. Whatever you want and whatever you have. And that is the finished face. But this face, no it's not, this face needs a nose. There we go. I used a little leaf shape for the nose. And this face has the ability to turn from being sad into being happy. So there we go. Very easy. You can make it as easy and as simple as you like or you can use whatever you find around the house. See you next week, bye. We hope you enjoyed that little set of activities this week. Can you guess where I am? Have a little look, what can you see? Some milk, some food, some boxes. This is where normally we'd be with you guys at the weekend, but during the week at the moment, we're using the hub to help lots of different people that are struggling to get out and about. One of the things we're doing is packing up some food boxes. We thought you'd like to see what's going on in your space whilst you're busy at home. We'd love to see what you're getting up to too. Maybe you could send a little video like this and send it to me on WhatsApp or ask your grown-ups to pop it on an email. You can send it to vicky at thehubbeading.org and then next week you could be on this programme too. That would be lovely. Have a good week. Stay safe. Bye.